Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to care for plants, propagate them, photograph them, style with them, and then share my experience with you here on YouTube and on my Instagram. So if you're into that kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel and send me likes. So today's video is going to be full of visuals on plants while I share with you my experience, my tips, some techniques in terms of photo taking and also editing and yes there will be editing in all my photos this is how I can achieve better quality images but keep in mind that when you edit your images you don't want something to look fake or unnatural we're only editing so that the final photo matches what our eyes can actually see and I want to put out a disclaimer that I'm actually a trained photographer I have been photographing for about 20 years I was a film major in school and my photography skills are actually self-taught. I do have to look up a lot of the techniques. And I actually have a photo studio for three years now. So I am a professional photographer, technically speaking. I photograph fashion catalog, but I also do love photographing people in their candid moments. And more recently, I love to photograph plants. Taking pictures of plants has been a very, very important part of my plant experience only because one, I can take really good photos and share with the world and taking good pictures of plants is actually an adrenaline rush. It brings me so much joy, it's, um, it's a good feeling to share such beautiful imagery and also the camera sometimes catches details that our eyes don't really see. So yeah, I actually recommend for you guys to take up a bit of photography around your plants so that you can experience this sort of elevated experience yourself because I don't think I'll be into plants and into YouTubing or my Instagram account as much if it weren't for photography. And in this video, I'm going to walk through with you some of my tips uh, and keep in mind that um, taste and creativity cannot be taught. So it's up to the individual uh, how they approach photography and this it's so subjective just because someone is good at photography it doesn't mean that everybody will like it so experiment with your style with your environment with your lighting conditions and whatever plans that you have and just go to town because after all uh, photography is free just so you know i actually photograph everything using my uh, iphone x and more recently i've gotten an iphone 12 and the camera is way way better so you don't need a fancy camera you don't need a dslr with big lenses uh, those are great too, but I find that those are a little bit bulky, they're difficult to, difficult to carry around and sometimes their white balance is a little bit off because I do find that our smartphones have better softwares at recognizing color correctly, focusing better and getting the right exposure without us having to tinker, all of that. I do know how to manually tinker a DSLR camera, but this is so much easier, this is so much more stress-free to just use your phone and go to town. The most important thing about uh, photographing your plants is your angle. As you can see here, here's a Hoya Carnosa compacta that's in flower. And you, most people will just, you know, take a picture like this. Like they'll get close to the uh, plant and then call it a day. They'll try to take different angles. Um, however, I want to go further by letting you guys know that you can you have to pretend that you are an animal, a, a, a flying insect or a crawling ant, if you will. You can absolutely bring your camera up close. Don't be shy, get really close up to it. It's not gonna bite you. So just keep looking for that hidden world. And as you can see here, I'm actually playing with some foreground and background where I'm blurring, um, keeping things in and out of focus. And I'll uh, touch on that later with some more examples, but this is actually a pretty good frame right here. And another thing that I want to encourage is instead of taking things from an eye level, go down. I'm on the floor right now. I'm lying down on the floor. There. Get up close and then personal. Go under the hood and discover a hidden world. So this is my tip for you guys. Oh, sorry, my hands in the way. So yeah, this is my tip for you guys is to start going above, going below the plant, finding different angles. Sometimes you have to move the plant. You can bring it to a white wall. You can bring it to a new environment and you can photograph it so many different ways. Look at this shot right here. This is pretty nice. So uh, yeah, I'm even going way under. I'm going, okay, I'm going way under the plant now. 
There you go. Look. Look at that. We have now discovered a whole, whole new world. And this is amazing. So I want to invite you guys to be active around the plant, wear your uh, clothing that you don't mind getting dirty, <laughs> and just roll around in the dirt with your plant. <laughs> and you can find your subject. For example, in this one, I actually find a new leaf, and that's particularly interesting for me. So I can actually film or photograph just a new leaf. By the way, I'm filming everything in landscape mode, but in actuality, all my photographs were in portrait mode because plants are actually in a portrait mode. They grow upwards most, like, most of the time. So yeah, yeah, you can focus your uh, photograph, frame a tiny plant or something interesting. Like, you know, there are a lot of details in nature that uh, you may have missed otherwise. That's a pretty good angle too. So just move around your plant. There, that's a good frame. And sometimes don't forget to look on the underside. You can take pictures of the plants from behind. Uh, don't be shy and can bring it to wall. I'm gonna do a wall section later because a lot of you guys are asking me how I can get my wall to be so white. And yeah, I'm gonna show you how. And while I'm here, you can see uh, the leaf textures. You can bring it up close to the leaves. Don't be shy. If you're shy with your plants, take them out on a date. <laughs> Buy them some wine, take them to a movie and then get really up close and personal with them. <laughs> and you can also group plants. Group plants are so beautiful to look at. Uh, you know, there's, if you can see here, I have some foreground and some background going on. And I can get up close to this one so it's not really alone. Let me get up close to the sedum here. Or, or I can use the sedum as a, sort of a foreground where I'm focusing more on the Haworthia behind it. So you can always frame your photos, you guys. Like this is also a pretty good uh, frame to go with. Ah, there you go. Again, this would have been a lot better in portrait mode, but yeah, I'm in uh, landscape mode right now. So yeah, just group your plants, style them and take pictures of them so that they create a story. Um, that's it. Uh, again, these are all subjective to taste. I cannot teach you guys anything about taste, it's, it's individual. See something interesting or repetitive, you can actually just bring your camera really close to the leaves like this. There you go. Again, this is much better in portrait mode. I do recommend not to photograph your plants in landscape mode, but you can actually go down, pretend you're an ant climbing down this plant. Look at that. There's so much detail in here that sometimes our eyes can't even see. So it's it's a really good challenge and it's, it's a good hunt, I would say. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I totally slipped and fell. There's something oily here all day long. I don't know what this is. Thank god this ledge caught my fall. Oh my god. Yeah, it's super slippery and oily here. I don't know what happened here. There's nothing around here that would be oily and it's, it, it's not drying up. So something's going on. Ooh, mystery solved. Uh, this is my dog's skincare and it was actually rolling around on the floor earlier so I think this is what it is. Uh, it's coconut oil and a bunch of essential oils to treat her fungal infections. So, oh my god, that was scary. I almost fell off this thing. <laughs> Sorry you have to see that, but you get my point, right? <laughs> yeah, you can also focus on like the, the cool little fronds that are unfurling. Get your camera to focus on them because baby leaves are so nice to look at. It makes everybody happy. It makes everybody's days. So yeah, definitely go with, um, go close up to your plants and find these cool details and tell your story. You know, what is this plant doing? How is it feeling today? Aha, so I found a better example of that. Um, and I still wanted to take this moment to show off the variegated Boston fern. How beautiful. Um, so you can absolutely get up close to the leaves, take pictures of the pattern, and share with them on the internet. Um, yeah, and sometimes you do have to move the leaves a bit, and if your hands are off the frame, nobody can see. <laughs> That's a little bit of a cheat there. Uh, yeah, this is really, really pretty. Look at that. That makes a pretty good shot too. And look at this area. This is the perfect place to practice. You can take so many beautiful pictures here. You can catch all the texture, all the uh, contrasting colors and pattern that is just fighting for space. 
they're just uh, clamoring over each other, <laughs> trying to exist, trying to grab your attention. It's just really pretty. So you can actually group your plants and style them with this baby leaf. So this is also a good photo when you have a baby leaf. Uh, they make people so happy. And yeah, you can style your plants, uh, have some foreground, some backgrounds. Uh, like that's pretty nice as well. Yeah, and just really uh, get up close to your plants. You can even bring your camera behind the plants and see if you can capture any beautiful uh, angles here. Pretend again that you are an animal. Pretend that you are, uh, I don't know, like a flying bee. You can take, um, it's monstera leaf, you can take a close-up photo of that. That's really pretty, as you can see here. This is pretty good shot. Uh, yeah, just go hunting. Look for that beautiful moment. It's so much fun, it's so interesting. And uh, you can also show some beautiful details on leaves, like that. And sometimes when you have your hands in frame, it also helps to give people perspective of like, um, the size of the leaf and also it gives your photo a human touch so not all your photos are just leaf after leaf after leaf so you have some pictures of your hands or your face <laughs> I'm just so obsessed with this cantheria this is amazing and one of the techniques that I actually use to uh, photograph plants is I just go like that I just follow one of the leaves at eye level I pretend I'm a mealybug <laughs> and just find uh, the right angle to take the photo. Uh, so yeah, don't be afraid to get up close, go above your plants, and you can also go below your plants. See if there's anything interesting underneath. Sometimes you will be surprised. Of course, there's nothing happening down here right now, but yeah, some plants are quite surprisingly beautiful from below. And you can also bring your camera right here. As you can see, this is a pretty good angle as well. So, yeah, I hope you get the point and experiment. You do have to get down on your knees sometimes and uh, take extreme angles. It, take, treat it as an exercise. <laughs> and if you notice plants misbehaving, like in this case, there's a little monstera leaf amongst the anthurium, I believe this is the crystallinum. And it's very cute. And these are all new leaves, new leaves. And that's another new leaf back there. So this makes a really cool shot right here uh, that tells a story about, I don't know, about roomies, siblings, or whatever you call it, or about plants that are out of place. Sometimes plants do uh, misbehave in different ways and that's really interesting to see. I think people are interested to know what's going on in their private lives. And when you have something that is in bloom, try to take a picture of it because we know that the blooms don't last forever and they are sometimes hard to come by and I think people appreciate seeing things like this, it makes people stay. So just get up close to your blooms and uh, just photograph them from different angles. Let me go down below. This is pretty nice too from below or I can go above it. Nope, <laughs> maybe I can go like that. This is pretty nice as well. So I've got an orchid here that's flowering. It's a little bit windy. It's, I don't recommend to take photos when it's windy because the plants are moving so you may have some blurred effects. But here are some of the angles that you can take with your flower. Uh, assuming that it's not windy, of course. Hang on. <laughs> I chose the wrong spot, but uh, it's pretty dark indoors right now, so I can't really shoot indoors. You can capture that lip right there, the sinister lip, and just go around the flower. Don't be shy. You know, get the details. There are so many cool frames in here that you can shoot. And this is even pretty with a white background with just bright indirect light. Look at how nice that is. And don't forget about the back. The backs are sometimes uh, what people overlook and they can be really pretty. Let me see if I can even go under. Nope, <laughs> but you get my point. Sometimes you can get pretty good photos from, like this is a pretty good frame, I think. Yeah. 
And taking good photos actually, again, will elevate your experience. You can show off your photography skills and your plans and inspire others to take angles that you know you may not even knew existed. Um, yeah, look at that. That's, that's, sorry, this video is turning out into a show-off video, but I can't... This brings me so much joy. I really, really love doing this. I know that some of you guys are bored, maybe, or some of you guys are challenged um you know i don't know <laughs> i just know that i love it so much and i wouldn't be into plants if i didn't get the chance to photograph them so yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna stop with this plant let's move on so here in my hand is a persian shield it's not even a big plant yet and this is actually some a plant that a lot of you guys are asking me about because i posted such nice photos of it other if I didn't post this photo in the way that I showcased it on Instagram, people might not have been intrigued by this plant. They may not even have paid attention to it. But let me show you quickly. Uh, against the white wall, this is just bright indirect light. Try not to get direct sunlight because you'll get harsh shadows and some weird uh, white balance that are off. So uh, when you have this plant, I mean, most of you guys are just gonna photograph it like that, right? You're gonna photograph from the front or from the top. But let me challenge you a bit. Get close up to the leaves. There you go. Look at the beautiful detail and the fine hairs that you may not have noticed even on the plant. There's tiny, teeny tiny feeler hairs. And you can focus also on the new leaves. This leaf was actually just a baby a few days ago, two days ago, and it's now unfurled. And yeah, if you take the details like that, people are going to be way more interested in the plant. Like, look at that shot. That's a really cool shot right there. I'm not even trying, you guys. This just came to me. So this is also a good shot when you can get a little bit of the blur uh, in the front and you still have your main focus and main object. So having a foreground, uh, uh, a main focus and a background can be really beautiful sometimes. And to achieve that blur, your camera already has that feature. You don't even need to do any settings. Just play with your plans, get close to them. Very, very easy. And I guess uh, from here on, the next thing that I have to show you is how to edit the photos. <laughs> okay, so we are in the editing room here. I'm using my cell phone actually because I edit fastest on my cell phone. And this is a program called PS Express, which stands for Photoshop Express. But actually any of your phone default editor, like your iPhone or Android, will have these default uh, edits. So the first thing that I want to do actually is to crop the image because I think this is a little bit off. And I always do my photos in uh, two by three uh, ratio, so to keep everything constant. So you have to frame your photo, find the right frame uh, to frame your story and sometimes things are better in the center and sometimes things are better off center so it's up to you and here we're going to adjust um, some of these um, exposures and all that stuff so let me start here because I, I can already tell with my trained eye that this photo is flawed it's not perfect so let me show you so I'm going to bump up the exposure a bit and this is because your camera doesn't see what your eyes see and then I'm going to uh, up the contrast a bit Turn on the highlights, uh, reduce the shadow a bit, and this is where I actually increase the whites. This is how I managed to get a lot of the white background here. So I just increase it quite significantly. And for the black, I may even tone it down a bit. And this is where the photo went wrong. Uh, it's a little bit cool, and it's also a little bit too green. So I'm gonna turn up the yellow a bit. Again, it takes the, the trained eye to see this because not a lot of people can see this right away. And this is what we call the white balance. So the white has to be exactly white. It cannot be orangey, it cannot be purpley or blue or anything. And this is uh, the tint. I'm gonna add a little bit of red color here. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, a, for me, this is a balance picture that has the perfect white balance that is not too warm or anything. And finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity here to increase the details, just bump it up just a touch. And there you go, uh, this is the final photo. And actually, I'm going to show you the before. And this is the after. As you can see, I'm not going 
adding special effects. I'm not applying filter. I'm just making the photos look more realistic and the details to be more crisp and sharp. So that's it. And let's move on to the next example. So this is a camphoria that I took earlier today. And I'm just going to edit this. The picture looks pretty good, but let's bump it up a little bit more. I'm going to brighten up a bit and add contrast. When you do contrast, the image does get a little bit darker so you can see the marking better. Uh, again, you have to keep experimenting with these because there's no formula and there's no steps to go. Each photo is going to be very different. Um, yeah, just, it just takes a lot of practice to get this right. And I can see that this photo is actually a little bit on the cool side. So I want to add a little bit of warmth here with temperature. Perfect. And then I just want to add a little bit of clarity here. There's a lot of things here that you can play with. Some of them are useful, some of them aren't. You can add a little bit of vibrance. I never play with the vibrance or the saturation, but in some cases when um, the images look a little bit dull, you can add a little bit of the coloring. But again, I want to keep reminding you guys, do not overdo it. Do not make things look unrealistic. We want photos to look real. Um, again, the disadvantage is that a lot of the cameras they're not seeing what our eyes are seeing. Um, so we, we need to adjust the photos. You know, no matter what you do, whether you work in fashion, advertising, or any kinds of photography, there's always going to be post-production work because our camera lens cannot see what we see. And here's a before and after of the photo. So this is before and after. Yes, you can see there's not a lot of difference here, but for me, because I'm a professional, I think that my edit looks way better. So I'm going to save this. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to do is this Apishkia. Again, the first thing that I want to do is uh, crop it. Let's find a better focal point of this plant. And I think I'm happy with this. Nice. This is a new growth point, so it's super cute. And I'm just going to edit everything else. And I think this uh, photo is a little bit on the blue side as well. And I think I am all set. So I took a picture of this sheet. It came from a philodendron and it's really beautiful. I wanted to capture how unique it is because nobody else would actually pay attention to these. So I wanted to call out how beautiful and creative nature can be. Uh, plants are truly nature's best work of art, I think. Uh, so yeah, I cropped this, get it in frame. Look at how beautiful this baby sheet is. The pinks is insane. So yeah, I just want to uh, edit it a bit. And some of you may object to me doing this. Like, you're thinking like, oh, this guy's cheating. He's editing his photos. Keep in mind that my edits are actually realistic. I'm not doing anything to exaggerate anything. I'm not lying. Uh, in this in this edit, I'm just showing them the way that my eyes are seeing things, bringing out the details, uh, and I think this is all set. Let me show you the before and after. There's not much difference, but of course you can see that the after is a lot more vibrant and a lot more realistic in my opinion. The old photo, the previous photo that's not edited, is just so dull and dark. Then that's because of the limitation of the lens. Let's do one more. Let's do... Tap. Let's do one more of this Apishkia from a different angle. And let me see, do I need to crop this? Uh, maybe a little bit, hang on. Uh, let's go to 2 by 3 And you can also rotate things sometimes a little bit. And hang on, I'm not getting it quite right yet. Okay, this is pretty nice. So I'm gonna start playing around with the light. Contrast, I'm gonna reduce some of the highlights. Shadow, I'm gonna increase the whites. As you can see here, I'm increasing the whites quite significantly. This is so that I can really highlight the plant, like have no gray background in here. Uh, I think the white balance here is actually quite okay. It's deceiving because this plant is a little bit iridescent, so I'm not, I'm, my eyes are not really trained to see 
what the white balance is, but I think it is a little bit on the red side. So your camera actually automatically uh, adjusts the white balance based on what it's seeing. And sometimes it's wrong, so you do have to manually adjust things once in a while. So yeah, I'm done with this. Let me quickly show you before, and this is after. As you can see, so much better. Realistic and crisp images that tell the story uh, that is exciting but not fake at all. So I hope that you found this video interesting and just remember that the key point is that you do have to edit and post-production your photos if you want them to look professional and nice and keep in mind that you want the pictures to look natural not fake you don't want to add crazy filters on it or have the wrong kind of white balance or exposure um, yeah i hope that you have enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching i hope that you guys are going around taking pictures of your plants visiting botanical gardens and you know just you can also photograph other people's plants it doesn't have to be just yours right uh, i'm at botanist on instagram if you want to look at some of the pictures that i've taken if you want to ask me about any questions regarding plant care and propagations so i'll try my best to get back to you meanwhile do take care and stay safe i will see you in the next video bye